Okay, let's have a look at these next two examples. Again, I'm going to be really brief. Um, Okay, it's an alternating series. The terms are going to zero. So yeah, we get that this thing converges just from the alternating series test. The terms are decreasing in magnitude and they're going to zero. But if we ignore the negative signs, this is really just a series of 1 over n to the 5. So looking at the series of absolute values, this converges. That's, that's a p-series. It's a p-series with p being 5. So that converges. So what that means is that our original series is absolutely convergent. So even stronger, not only does it converge, it converges regardless of whether there's negative signs there or not. Okay, so it's absolutely convergent. What about this next one? Does this converge or diverge? Well, I'm gonna think here, when n is really big, this plus one doesn't really matter. The terms look roughly like one over n squared. That's convergent. So when n is really big, this thing roughly looks like the p-series when p is two, which is convergent. Therefore, this series con should converge. So there's my thought process. I get that it converges. Now I'm going to have to write this up in a more rigorous way. I'm not relying on any sort of gut feelings, but to make things precise. So why do I know it converges? Well, one way to do that is to say, this thing is smaller than this. Because n plus 1, when I divide by it, it makes the thing smaller than just dividing by n. And then there was that other factor of n in the denominator. So this thing's smaller than that, so use comparison with 1 over 1 over n squared, which converges. So very brief explanations here, but I want you to go in and fill in the details. Again, we're giving brief explanations for these last few examples because I want you to get the sort of big picture perspective. What should you be able to do? You look at it. What are the things that you should be asking yourself? Do the terms go to zero? Do they not go to zero? What, what can I ignore? When, it, when n is big, what can I sort of replace it with? What should I be comparing it to? Should I use an integral test? These are sort of the big picture things you want to think about before diving into the individual details.